Hey everybody, Rob here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kurt Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2019 Mitsubishi Mirage. I think it's got a pretty clean look, the cross tube is visible, however it sits so low on the car that it's really not seen that much unless you're looking from underneath the car. Now one of the challenges when you have a Mirage is being transporting things. It's a rather small car which comes in handy when you're trying to save fuel economy, but again, when you're trying to get a bike somewhere or maybe some large gear, there's not a whole lot of room in there. A roof rack is an option to put bikes up there, but I myself am a little bit on the shorter side and I don't really like the idea of lifting my bike above my head right next to the paint. It's just kind of a scary thing to me, so I really feel like a hitch is a better option to transport all those things because we can put a bike rack in there, a cargo carrier, and free up some space inside. Now it is a class one hitch, which means it's going to give us that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening and it is going to be limited to class one accessories. Now the way we're going to mount all of our accessories is through the hitch pin hole here on the side. Our hitch is going to accept a standard half inch pin and clip. Now these do not come with the hitch, but you can find them here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices to make sure your accessories are secure and anti-rattle devices to cut down on that annoying rattling sound when we're driving down the road. Now if you do plan on doing some light duty towing, keep in mind there is a specific drawbar or ball mount that's made for this hitch. Now again, you can find that here at eTrailer.com. But if you are going to be towing, obviously you need a spot to hook up your safety chains. Here we have a plate style welded to the bottom of the receiver tube. And if you have some normal size hooks, you can see we got plenty of room to hook them on and take them off without any kind of interference. But if your trailer has these really oversized large hooks, you can see we can still get them on, but that flange on the lip here does make it a little bit of a tight fit. Now obviously the weight ratings is going to be an important factor when you're looking at a hitch. Now this hitch is going to be rated for a 200 pound tongue weight and that's going to be the maximum downward force at the end of the receiver tube. Now you'd be able to carry maybe one or two bikes with you which would be great because we're not really going to have room to put two bikes in our car. At the same time it's also going to have a 1500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's how much the hitch can pull but that does include the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. Now I do always recommend that you double check your Mitsubishi's owner's manual because that's the ratings for the hitch and we don't want to exceed the manufacturer's rating for the car. I'd like to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you out whenever you're looking for accessories for your new hitch. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper is going to be right about 3 inches. Now that measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room and they're not going to come in contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening is right about 12 and a half inches. Now at that height, I definitely recommend a bike rack or cargo carrier with a raised shank. That way we can get a little bit more ground clearance out of it. Now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's go through the installation process together. To begin our installation, we want to come to the back of our Mirage and we're going to start on the passenger side. So we'll come underneath and find the frame rail. Now on the bottom of the frame rail, you're going to notice that we have several holes on the bottom here. So we need to get some hardware in place. So we want to take our pull wire, take the coiled end. And what I like to do is just kind of estimate about how much wire you need to reach from your mounting location to the access hole. And I'll put a bend in it and it just kind of helps guide the wire through. We're going to put the coiled end in first and feed it back towards the access hole. And hopefully it should come out just like this. If not, you can put your finger in and kind of reach for it. But you want to make sure that both ends are coming out of the frame. And I'll even put a small bend in it so the tail doesn't get sucked in. And we want to grab our square hole spacer block. We'll slide it over the coiled end. And we'll take a carriage bolt and we're going to thread it onto the wire. And then one piece at a time, we'll push it back into the frame. And you just want to grab the end of your pull wire. Might have to jiggle a little bit, but we want that bolt to come down through the mounting hole. Now what I like to do, since these are so close together, is I'm going to put a small bend in my pull wire. And then I'm going to feed the coiled end into the hole that I want my hardware to come out. And then you can see it kind of just curves over to the access hole so I can pull the coiled end out of there. Now it's really important that you leave both ends of the pull wire out of the frame and you don't pull it all the way through. 
We're going to grab a square hole spacer block. We'll slide it over the pull wire. Then we'll take our carriage bolt and thread it onto the end of the coil. Then one piece at a time and push the block into the frame. You may have to get it past that bend in your wire. And then we'll push the carriage bolt into the frame. It may take a little bit of jiggling, but we'll pull it down so that bolt comes through the hole. Now it's going to be the same method for this one back here. You just want to start your coiled end in and use that same combination of square hole spacer block and then your carriage bolt and pull everything down through. Now I do suggest leaving the pull wires on there because it's going to help prevent the bolts from getting pushed into the frame. And even if they do, we can pull on the pull wire and drop them back down. So now we're going to move over to the driver's side frame rail and get our hardware in place. But once we get to the frame rail and start looking, we'll notice that we're not going to have as large of an access hole. We're going to have four smaller holes and obviously our same amount of hardware and same size hardware is not going to fit inside any of these. So we are going to have to enlarge this hole at the very back. Now you can do that a couple different ways. You can just get a large drill bit and enlarge it. You can use a file, just about whatever you have to enlarge this. But while you're doing it, you do want to periodically check to make sure your carriage bolt fits and your block fits in there because we only want to enlarge it big enough so that our hardware fits in place. I'm going to be using a step bit and again, periodically checking in between every so often to make sure my hardware fits in there. And once you have the hole enlarged enough that you can get both pieces of hardware in place, I always suggest using a little bit of spray paint to cover up any of the exposed areas. So hopefully it'll prevent any kind of rust or corrosion from building up. And the process for getting our hardware in these holes is gonna be the same. Our access hole will be one mounting location, and the somewhat larger one towards the front is gonna be the other one. So we'll just get all of our hardware in place the same way we did on the other side. Just be really careful on this hole when you're reaching in to get the pull wire because we did just drill it out, so you don't wanna cut your finger on any sharp edges. Now the final piece of hardware we need to get in place before we lift our hitch is going to be this U-bolt. Now this U-bolt we just want to drop so that it wraps around this center tow hook right at the bottom of the trunk pan here. Now I do suggest getting an extra set of hands to help you lift up the hitch. That way you're not trying to support both sides and it just makes it a little bit easier to at least get one piece of hardware in. Now whenever you lift your hitch up you're going to want to feed your pull wires from the top going down through the hitch. It'll make it easy to line everything up. Now you want to make sure you feed your pull wires from the top going down. It'll help line everything up and just make it a little bit easier for those bolts to come through. And lift it up, make sure the bolts are coming through the frame. Then you want to remove one of your pull wires. And then we're gonna have this flange nut. You wanna get at least one piece of hardware on each side. That way the hitch won't fall down and hopefully it'll support itself and we can get the rest of the hardware in place. So we be real careful not to push that bolt into the frame. So what I like to do if you can is just kind of push on the hitch to one side and then I'll kind of trap it, keep it from spinning. And get that nut started and get the rest of them in place. Now on that tow hook where we put our U-bolt, you want to make sure that the legs are coming through the slots on the hitch and then we'll secure them down with two flange nuts just like the rest of the hardware. Now for our outer bolts, we're going to use an 11 16 socket to tighten them up. Just want to make sure we go through and snug all the hardware down.
For the two flange nuts on our U-bolt, you can use a 9 16th socket or a 14 millimeter socket to snug them up. And I do suggest alternating between the two so it doesn't get in a bind. Just kind of tighten up one side, move to the other, and alternate going back and forth. I'm gonna come back with a torque wrench and I'm gonna to torque all my hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. And again, with the flange nuts on the U-bolt, I do suggest alternating going back and forth so you get an even pressure when it clamps down. You wanna make sure you go back and repeat that for any remaining hardware that you have. But once you have all your bolts torqued down, that'll finish up your installation and your look at the Kurt Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2019 Mitsubishi Mirage.